hello there. Welcome to my channel. I'm Angela from artery.co.uk and today I thought we'd look into making this really cute little file folder. It's, it is easy to make but it did take me a couple of goes as usual. This is the first one and you can see that it's not quite um, level there. But it was my first attempt. It has a little ribbon for a closure and it's just little pockets, little accordion pockets which are really cute. This one went a little better and it's exactly the same inside. You can make these larger but it's just, I just think they are so so cute and so easy to make. You can see there that we've used, I've used envelopes. So what you need for this project are three C6 or A2 envelopes depending on where you are um, and they need to be cut in half. Now if you've seen me make videos I have a plethora of videos on making envelopes so if you don't want to see me making envelopes then feel free to just skip ahead. I'll divide the video into chapters so you can just skip ahead from the part you don't want to see. I'm going to be making envelopes with this. It's a Birra Birra envelope maker and it's, it's ideal for this purpose. There are a million ways to make envelopes. So I'm just going to cut paper that I need to make the envelopes with using my Sizzix trimmer. The cardstock I always use for my envelopes is this from the works. It's just 30 sheets for a pound and it's absolutely ideal. So I've just taken my Sizzix. I had to cut um, the video cut off when I was cutting it, <laughs> but never mind. I just cut all of, the, all of these three sheets at once. You need three envelopes. I cut three at once to eight by eight. That's what I'm going to need for this envelope maker. So as you can see there, this is the one we're going to be making the A2 size, four and a quarter by five and a half envelope. For, well, if we were making a card, that's what it would be for. But the paper size needs to be eight by eight and it needs to be scored at three and a half inches. So I'll show you how to do that. It comes with a little scoring tool that you can just take off. Right, so we need to, first of all, find there's three and a half. So the bottom of the card needs to go to where that three and a half inch mark is. And then we score it down there. And that's, we don't have to measure that anymore. We just turn the card around and this time we put it where the score guide is. It's difficult to see it in this light, but that line we've just scored goes where the score guide is. Make sure that's straight. And we take the scoring tool and do that again. And do the same for the other two sides. Now, whichever method you use to make envelopes, you will now need to either punch or cut these triangles out. I have the actual notch creator that came with this scoring board and envelope maker, so I'll do that now. I'm going to see if I can cheat and do these two at the same time. I love crafting but I find making envelopes incredibly tedious. Sometimes it's easier just to buy ready-made envelope set or a ready-made card and envelope set. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that at all. But it is more cost-effective to, to make your own. So you've got to weigh that up with how much you enjoy doing it. Right, I shall just make up the envelopes now. You can put your envelopes together any way you like. Wet glue, tape, tape, uh, glue roller, doesn't really matter. Just as long as they're um, quite strongly closed. 
I'm just using this, this Crafters Companion Glue Runner. I think this is the dot one, but I have both and they're really good. Very strong. I always put a couple of rows on just for extra strength. And just make sure that glue is massaged or squished into those fibres because <coughs> the envelopes need to be sealed. I'll put this away because I am going to be using wet glue for the rest because it's a bit tricky and I need to make sure that I can manoeuvre the glue around. Right, so we have our three envelopes even though for some reason one is a bit smaller than the rest. Right, that's why sometimes it's be that's why sometimes it's better to buy a ready-made envelope. You know, everything goes wrong when I do this on camera everything it's so annoying but anyway what you need to do now is cut your envelopes in half so there's no saying that you have to do this with a trimmer you can do it by hand just with a pair of scissors if you like it's it's up to you so anyway I'm just going to try and line up the channel with the point of the envelope there it doesn't have to be super exact but just get it as exact as you possibly can Okay, and then you've got your half envelope there. I'm going to have to trim these down, I'm afraid, if they're not all the same size, because I can't stand that. You know, the other ones turned out perfectly. It's typical. Right, so up again. Just do it as best you can. Okay, so you now have your six pockets. So according to my piece of paper in here, we need a piece of card at six by four and a half inches. This is going to be for the bottom, the concertina part. So that's going to be this part here. So I'll use the same colour paper. So that, as I said, that needs to be six by four and a half inches. Right, so now I'll put this into scoring mode. And this card now, on the long side, has to be scored at every half inch. And I also suggest you turn it over and do it again because these are going to be fold, folded over and over. Just makes it a bit easier to fold, that's all. Just on the same score marks. Okay. So. We'll put this to one side for now. I don't know if you can see all the score marks on there. And we also need a piece of card at five and a half by four and a half. I'm going to use this, this pretty paper here because mainly because it's not directional. You can use a directional paper, but you would have to figure out which way it's going to be up. So if you, if you use directional paper, so it's probably going to be the right way up there and then it's going to come over and be upside down. So I tend to use non-directional paper for this. So as I said, it's got to be five and a half by four and a half. And this needs to be scored at three and a half and four and a half. On the long side, at three and a half and four and a half. So this is going to be the back. It's sort of going to come over like that. It's going to be the back so we'll put that away. And the front is going to be, sorry I need to keep checking my notes. The front you need a piece of card four and a half by three and a half. And that is all of the cutting and scoring finished. You'll probably be pleased to know. This is the bit I found a bit tricky because it kept going out of sync, if that's the right word. So I'm just going to do it as best I can. Each time you score, you turn over a piece of this, just score it down. 
So the first piece I've folded over away from me. And I'll turn it over and fold that bit towards me. I'm just going to try and make sure that the score lines line up. You're probably better at this than I am. And just keep going on like that. Fold it away from you. Then towards you. And keep giving it a good crease. You can use any colour card stock. But I do suggest that you use a sturdy one for the bottom and the sides. The inside pockets don't really have to be that sturdy. So this is going to be the back cover and that needs to be glued on to that part there. So I'm going to put some glue on there. This is my Cosmic Shimmer Glue. I haven't used this for a while. I keep forgetting about it. It's, it's good. It gets it give a good strong grip. Put that on there like that and make sure it's even. It's up here. A little bit out of whack. Yeah, that's the beauty of using wet glue. You can sort of manoeuvre it into space a little bit. That glue good stick down there. And we turn it over. And this is where we're going to place the front. And that needs to go on that as well. Make sure you place it the right side down. A good squash. Right, now we're going to start placing our envelopes. So what we need to do with this, see if I can get it right this time, because I got it wrong once, not to start all over again. So we are going to be putting the glue on the mountain sides, not the valley sides. So it's going to be these parts here that are pointing up. That's why we, I've just done that, just grab the glue. Right, so we need to put it on here like this. You can use tape, a glue runner, just something that's going to give a good grip. Now you take your envelope and you put it against the crease, try and keep it even and push that side onto it like that. Sometimes the glue just squeeze out. It is easier to use tape but I'm always worried that I'm going to need that little bit of extra time just to manoeuvre the envelopes into place. So and again we'll miss one and just put it on the mountain going up. Another piece make sure that the openings are facing the right way. You don't want those to be stuck down. So again, envelope, some of these envelopes are not as wide as others for some reason. I don't know why that's happened, it didn't happen before, but never mind. As I always say, it is just to show you the process. Never mind my mistakes, I can't get away from making mistakes on camera. So. I just have to deal with it. I did make something fairly similar to this. Um, I made an expanding file folder, so if you're interested in that video, I'll leave a link up there and you can check that out if you like. It wasn't quite as uh, fussy as this.
Now for this last one, you can see where the, at the edge of that, it sometimes shows through on the inside. So I'm going to put some glue along that line. I'll, And just make sure everything is nice and stuck. Right, so as usual, I've done it wonky. I don't know why that keeps happening. It's something to do with the way I fold these. the one that I did off camera turned out okay now this one's gone wonky but that's always the case isn't it when I do stuff on video but never mind I'll still show you how to do it so this this we're going to leave as is but this is going to be stuck to the back of that envelope now you have to be careful how you stick these because if you put glue all over the one side and then stick them down this is not going to work right so starting from the back I'm going to put a single strip of glue down the center of each envelope bring that one over squash it together like that and again on that one just down the center bring the next one over And another one just down the centre and just keep bringing the other ones to meet them. I already did that one and it didn't. Yes, it did. That's okay. So, yes, on the last one. There we go. So now you can see, because we just put the, the glue down the middle, if you can imagine if it was stuck like that, you wouldn't be able to open them if they were all stuck together. But because we just put a bit of glue down the middle, then we've got our lovely little pockets like that. So now for the fastening, it's just going to be a ribbon. I'm going to try and get this right, because like I say, it's not a little bit crooked but I can still work with that so I'm going to lay it on the lay it flat and you're going to need a hole punch if you're going to use ribbon so I have a little mini hole punch now what you should really do is measure these so you get them equal distance but I'm not going to do that I'm not going to be keeping this because it's gone wonky but just eyeball it if you like just make two holes there and then what you need to do is bring that over like that so it's flat you see it's flat it's even and grab the sides and just double check again that it's nice and flat get a pen or anything you like to mark with and just mark through the holes that you punched onto the other side onto the piece of card underneath and we're going to punch there as well I'm going to get some ribbon and it needs to be threaded it needs to be cut first so we'll get a good chunk of ribbon first of all Thread it through the front on, with both sides and then get them to the same length and 
thread these two through to the back. I'm thinking, you know, it's possibly because the cardstock for this is a bit too thick, which is maybe why it's not folding as much as it should, because that glue is, is quite thick cardstock. Should perhaps give it a go with a thinner cardstock. Right, so once you've done that, you can now fold it or close it just by making a little bow. And then you can just cut off the bits that you don't need. And there you have it. A little bit wonky as usual, but that is really cute. I really like that. There you go, if we open it up, you've got your little wallets and then you can just fasten it up with the ribbon again. Now to be absolutely honest, I have no idea what I would use this for, but I imagine they would make nice gifts. There you go, your nice little file folder. So of course it went wrong on camera, but just make sure your envelopes are cut the right size. I like that one, I have no idea what happened there still. They're all different sizes, that's, ne that's never happened before, oh dear me. So I'll bring this one over again to show you, this one turned out a lot better. Everything's more or less the same size, but I like the, you can have the same colour paper, you can use whatever colour paper that you like, whatever colour cardstock you want, but I like it with the, the, the different one for the bottom for the concertina folds, the accordion folds, I just think they look nice. So there you go, a way to make some little teeny tiny file folders, whatever Whatever you would use them for, I have no idea, but they are so cute. I know some people put money inside them and give them as gifts. You could put gift cards inside. You could put little tea bags inside. There is loads of space in there because of this fold, this, because of this cover. You could put tea bags in or anything, little gifts for people. I think it would make a really nice gift. If you have any more ideas as to what you could do with one of these, then please drop a comment and I would love to hear your ideas. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a great day. Bye bye now.